Hi, my name is David Zander. I'm the Deputy Director at New Bedford Emergency Medical Service. We're at the Public Safety Complex in the South End to take a look at one of our brand new ambulances. And with me is Paramedic Garcia and Paramedic Supervisor Ivan Brody. So we want to give you an opportunity to see our new ambulance. We have four of them and they're literally state-of-the-art ambulances. Uh, they're emergency rooms on wheels. So we wanted to give you an opportunity to see what we work on every day uh, responding to emergencies. So the outside of the ambulance has several compartments that uh, contain all our emergency equipment. So we'll walk you through the first compartment here. So this is a typical, what we call it the oxygen compartment. It's behind the driver's side. It contains um, what we call an M tank. It's just a very big tank with lots of oxygen. And it also has uh, some extrication equipment inside that we can use to get people out of the house. So what's nice about this feature is that in the prior ambulances that we used to have, we would have to physically lift this bottle out of this container and, and that could lead to injuries. So this ambulance has this uh, device can exactly remember what this device is called but all she has to do is press or put a little pressure on it and it comes right down to the ground she unbuckles it and rolls the bottle out so Andre doesn't have to pick the bottle up and risk hurting her back or, or any, you know any other part of her so this is a, a safety device that helps limit any injuries to the paramedics we change these bottles out just about every other day um, so having this device and not having to pick it up certainly prevents injuries So our next compartment on the ambulance contains some of our, our first in equipment. So these are emergency bags that Andrea and the other EMTs and paramedics work on uh, will bring into the patient in their house. So we're required to bring our equipment to the patient's side. So we need to have it uh, accessible to the EMTs and the paramedics on the ambulance. And I'm going to let Andrea explain what these different color bags are. So the main bag is our BLS bag, so if there's two providers on the truck that are EMT basics, they get to have this bag which has their main equipment that they can use um, in, within their scope of practice. Um, our second bag is our main airway bag, so if anyone calls in for shortness of breath or anything like that, um, we get to bring this in and it has a tank in there and it has all their medication for any respiratory problems that the patient may have. Um, and then our um, red bag is the PD bag so any calls that we get with like infants ch um, children or anything like that we get to bring that in and it has the main equipment um, for children including a brazil tape which we use to measure out um, the children to see what medication we could give depending on how much they weigh. So as we move along the, the driver's side of the ambulance, we have a, a final and uh, back rear compartment. Uh, this is kind of, we, we kind of put a lot of safety equipment into this compartment. So this yellow tube that you see, uh, we can use that to carry large patients um, out of a house. Uh, maybe a patient is lost in the woods and we have to uh, take them out of the woods. We can use this. It's basically a, a moving device that we can use for patients. Then we have some bulletproof vests and some, um, some helmets that we can use if we have to go to a situation where the, there may be a weapon involved. We take the safety of our EMTs and paramedics very seriously. So the city's invested uh, monies into making sure that we can provide them with equipment that's going to keep them safe if they're at a violent scene. That could be a police standby or it could be some other type of potentially violent incident. Uh, we want them to be safe. We also have some protective helmets for them to keep them safe at motor vehicle accidents or building fires or just to keep their, their head warm uh, and dry in, in the winter weather. Um, and then we have some extra equipment up, up here, just some extra uh, PPE. COVID was big, so we're required now to have a certain amount of PPE on the ambulance at all times. And then this orange box contains some, some extra medications that, th that they may use. Uh, most of the ambulances have uh, all the same equipment in this compartment. So as we move along the outside of the ambulance, now on the passenger side, the rear passenger compartment uh, contains more equipment that we can use to move a patient. So we're required that if we go to someone's house, we have to carry them out of the house 
uh, by using one of these three pieces of equipment that you see in front of you. The yellow striker, that's called a stair chair. So we can have someone sit in that chair and we can secure them and then carry them down uh, a, a staircase. Uh, this piece of equipment is also a stair chair. It's just not as advanced as the yellow one. The yellow one has some rubber tracks on it that are able to grip the stairs and take some of the weight off of the EMTs and paramedics when they're carrying somebody. That's a big part of this job is carrying patients. So when we move someone out of a house, we want to make sure we can do it as safely as possible for our EMTs and paramedics. That's why we would use these stair chairs. That long yellow board that you see in front of you is a long board Well, in a scoop. We would basically use that to get somebody up off the ground who wasn't able to get up off the ground themselves. And then again, it has some straps on it and it provides the EMTs and paramedics with some, a level of safety that they won't hurt their backs. And then we just have some additional collars, C collars up, up on top there that we'll use for patients who have suspected spinal injuries. So as we move up to the passenger side of the, of the cab, um, again, it's a, basically a, a normal cab that you would find in any Ford F-550 truck, except the passenger has a, be, is able to operate that computer-aided dispatch terminal. So while the driver is driving and focusing on driving safely, the passenger can work the radios, can work the lights, and can get the information that they need off of that uh, computer-aided dispatch terminal. So as I said earlier, we're at the public safety building in the south end. So this is medic number two. Uh, we have five ambulances in the city. This is medic number two. Its primary response area would be the south end. And then this ambulance would also be the first to back up medic one, whose primary response area is the north, is, uh, is downtown and the west end. So this is a pretty busy truck. Um, this truck does about 4,500 runs a year. So it's two people, you know, four people doing 4,500 runs a year. This this is a busy ambulance, so we're very fortunate to have uh, this brand new state-of-the-art ambulance to meet that call volume. Um, it's a busy truck. So now that we're in the inside, the patient compartment area of Medic 2, uh, we have some equipment in this roll-up cabinet. This cabinet is accessible out from the outside and from the inside. So what you're looking at uh, on the top shelf is you'll see that blanket with that, uh, that, those, that fluid. So that's an IV warmer. So some patients require warm IV fluids as part of their treatment plan. So we're able to keep some of that fluid warm for them so that if the paramedics or EMTs have to administer that, they can. We have some extra gloves. And then below that, we have probably one of the most important pieces uh, outside of the EMTs and the paramedics. One of the most important pieces of equipment on this truck is that called a Lucas, and that is a CPR compression device. And we'll take that out and show you, give you an example of that in a few minutes. So it's a roll up compartment. They have access to either inside or outside, and it contains some very important equipment. So that CPR compression device, or otherwise known as a Lucas, uh, is a very unique piece of equipment. We're very fortunate in New Bedford uh, to be able to have six or seven of these pieces uh, of equipment. And that's what I talked about earlier. It's, a, it's almost essential that any EMS service, uh, but specifically New Bedford EMS, have the support of its policymakers and its, its city leaders. So we were able to demonstrate the effectiveness of this, of this machine to city council a few years ago, uh, and the city council and the mayor's office were able, to pr we were able to get us seven of these. So why is that important? Outside of the EMTs and the paramedics who work on this truck, this is probably one of the most important pieces of equipment. We all know that CPR is what's proven to save lives. The data has not come back yet on any of the medicine that we have that, that this works or doesn't work. The one thing we know for sure is that compressing the heart when it needs help to be compressed and to get that blood flow going again, to perfuse the organs, that this machine does it. So what happens is this machine will come out, it'll straddle the patient's chest, this suction cup will come down mid-sternum, we will turn it on and it will uh, compress the patient's heart to the exact compression rate that's required per AHA. So it doesn't get tired, it doesn't take breaks, 
You can carry someone on it and still perform effective CPR compressions. And we use it on every cardiac arrest we have. It's so good that now when we bring the patient into the hospital, the doctors just leave it on, right? So th like they know it works. It's an extremely important piece of equipment and we're very fortunate in New Bedford to have six or seven of these devices on all our ambulances and our supervisor vehicles. So that'll perform the appropriate compressions to depth ratio, according to the American Heart Association, on a patient whose heart is not beating. So we're beating, we're beating their heart for them. It's an extremely important piece of equipment and we're very lucky to have it. So this ambulance is more than just a vehicle. This ambulance is an emergency room on wheels. There's not much that the doctors and the nurses at the hospital can do for a patient who's critically ill that we can't do in the back of this ambulance. Uh, and it's designed that way. All of our EMTs and paramedics all work under the name of a medical director. So they constantly are in contact with a physician at the hospital and the physician will give the paramedics and EMTs orders for specific types of medications. Those are the same medications that those physicians are going to give that patient in a trauma room. So we're basically, when someone's critically ill, time matters. Minutes matter. Minutes save lives. So when Andrea or any of the other EMTs, paramedics show up, they're bringing the St. Luke's Hospital emergency room to your house. The first pocket of the Zoll um, X series is um, where we keep all of our essentials to take their vitals. Um, here you find the three lead cable. Um, this is what we do for to take a picture of someone's heart. So basically an EKG. So this compartment, basically in this compartment, which is on the left side of the monitor, is going to be all the equipment they need to get vital signs on a patient. So there's a blood pressure cuff in here, one for an adult uh, and one for a, a, a pediatric patient. We also, it also has some what they call EKG leads, which are basically just a bunch of wires and they attach electrodes to the end of these wires and they place them in a particular order on a patient's chest and they're able to get a picture they're able to get a picture of a patient's heart. They're able to see how fast the heart is beating or how slow. They're able to see whether the rhythm is regular or irregular. Uh, and they're able to see some other aspects of someone's heartbeat. So first thing they do when they arrive at the patient's side is they take this piece of equipment up to the patient's house, next to the patient's side. They will attach those leads to the patient's chest, both male and female, and they'll get a blood pressure on the patient and they can also get a pulse ox on the patient, which is this probe right here. So after they get a blood pressure uh, of the patient and a picture of the patient's heart, they'll attach this pulse ox probe to the patient's finger and they'll be able to, they'll get a reading and it will indicate how well the person is oxygenating, how much oxygen the patient has in their blood. And it's a very simple procedure. All our paramedics and EMTs are allowed to do it. And then within a few seconds, you'll get a reading on this screen and it will tell us how well, they're, how, how well they're doing, how well they're oxygenating. So you have 97% right there, which is pretty good. It's an average. So this is a, an essential piece of equipment that goes into every patient contact, and we use it on, on almost every patient. If you have chest pains, we're using this. If you have shortness of breath, we're using this. If you have an asthma attack, we're using this. If you suffered from an overdose, we're using this. It's state of the art. And we're very lucky to have uh, five of them throughout, six of them throughout our service. So as we move along to the captain's seat of the ambulance, this would be this uh, EMT or paramedic will sit here, and they have access to all uh, some very vital equipment that we have. So we have some fluid IV setups, uh, different size needles, uh, and some more fluid up there in that compartment that we can administer to a patient who needed it. Normally, we're going we're gonna to give fluid to a patient who's hypotensive, has low blood pressure, maybe they're a little bit altered, 
Uh, maybe they have a fast heart rate and you want to try to slow that down with a fluid challenge. So they have access to that all right here. The good thing about this is it's all right here. We're not leaning over the patient to grab a piece of equipment. All the essentials is right here within someone's reach. So all the EMTs on the ambulance, all the EMTs and paramedics at New Bedford EMS, they're highly trained and they're highly motivated. They're on the cutting edge of a lot of medical procedures uh, that they're allowed to do. They all work under a physician at the hospital. Our medical director is Dr. Matt Bibbins. He's a physician at St. Luke's Hospital, and he's responsible for the, their overall training and some of the things that they can do in the field. So this radio serves two purposes. One. When we're transporting someone to the hospital, we can just pick up that microphone, go to a certain channel, call the hospital, and let them know we're bringing in a patient so that the hospital is prepared for us when we arrive. Try to minimize those wait times. Nobody likes waiting in an emergency room. But more importantly is if they have a critical patient and they are going to call the hospital and request permission to do a procedure or maybe give a, a, a medicine, they can get on this radio and they can talk immediately to a doctor in the emergency room. So the doctors have a responsibility to answer this radio and, and answer any questions that the EMTs or paramedics have almost instantly. So it's a great feature for them to be able to pick up that microphone and be able to have a physician at the other end uh, that they can talk about the patient's complaints or the, or the treatment plan for that patient. So as we move to the rear of the patient compartment, we have some extra equipment here in the back. We kind of divide the, the compartments up into ALS, which is advanced life support, which is what we just looked at. And then we have some BLS, which is basic life support over here. So the equipment that you'll find in these cabinets would be good for injuries or bandaging injury, injuries, um, ice packs, trauma dressings uh, to be able to, to treat those types of patients. And then we, we, again, we have that outside compartment that we have access to inside here too and Andrea has set up this orange box so that has some extra medication if they need it. So another feature on this ambulance uh, that we're fortunate to have here in the city are these state-of-the-art striker stretchers. As you can see, we can take our hands off of this stretcher and the patient on it will be perfectly safe. It's hydraulics, it's all electrical. We're not holding it with our arms or you know, using our backs and potentially injuring ourselves. At the touch of a button, she can lower the legs of the stretcher. So that once the, once the legs are extended down to the ground, uh, Andrea will unlock it from the ambulance and be able to wheel it right out and bring the patient into the emergency room. So this does several things. Number one, it prevents any unnecessary injuries to the paramedic or the EMT. We're not using it to lift. We're not using our backs or our knees or our arms to lift and hold people anymore. It's all done safely with, with uh, hydraulics and, and the electronics and the, and the stretcher. The stretcher is able to hold someone up to 750 pounds, and there are also some devices that you can put on the sides if you had larger patients. So it's a very important piece of equipment for several reasons. Number one, it protects the paramedics and the EMTs who are, who are using the stretcher and prevents any unnecessary back injuries. That's important because if you lose an EMT or a paramedic to a back injury, they're out of work six months to a year uh, and that can create a problem for, you know, because of staffing issues. And most importantly, it's safer for the patient, right? It can, again, the stretcher can hold 750 pounds. Uh, it's balanced appropriately. It still has two providers with one in the front, one in the back, um, and it provides a, a more safer experience for the patient. So we're very fortunate in New Bedford, the residents of New Bedford are very fortunate to be able to have this type of equipment to provide them a safer experience in the ambulance.
So thank you for coming down to Medic 2's home in the public safety complex in the South End here in New Bedford. We hope you enjoyed your tour of our new ambulance. We're very happy to have it. And we have to honestly thank the citizens of New Bedford for strongly supporting their EMS system. Uh, the support they show the EMTs and the paramedics in the city is just phenomenal. You don't find that in many cities. So thank you from our hearts to yours uh, for continuing to support EMS. We're also very fortunate to have a very strong administration who's been extremely supportive of EMS over the last few years. If it wasn't for the administration, we wouldn't have been able to purchase these ambulances. And we also have to thank the city council. Uh, for their making sh for their strong support of EMS as well. Frankly, you know, EMS is it's a non-political organization. We come to your house no matter who you vote for or who you like or what you look like. Uh, we come and we try to help you in your moment of crisis. So we're extremely fortunate to have the support of all the policymakers in this city, and we appreciate that. You're more than welcome to come down and see the ambulance if you'd like. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Thank you. So Andrea's been with us for four or five years, and she's the star, one of our stars of the department. Um, and we're looking to hire more. So if you're interested in thinking about getting into the healthcare field, give us a call in New Bedford EMS, and we can see what we can do to get you going in that direction. So again, thank you for coming to visit us today. Uh, thank you for your support. If you're interested in a career in the healthcare field, we'd love to help you out and, give you, and talk to you here at New Bedford EMS. Uh, we couldn't do what we do without you. We appreciate your support, and we'll see you next time.